Let's talk about using DIG for name and address resolution. First of all, I have a machine right here, and I am going to use the DIG command. So type in DIG by itself, and it just tells me a little bit of information about how it gets out. So these are the root servers. So a bunch of root servers I'm connected to, they all have this thing right here where they are looking for the dot. You can see the addresses used to get to them. And a little bit about this, um, first of all, this is the name. This is the number of seconds in the time to live. And then it's the internet uh, A records. And then this is an IPv4 address. So you can see this right here, NS records, and it's saying this is the server. And so it's just kind of listing the servers. And then it's saying, oh, by the way, these servers also happen to be these IP addresses. It's also saying that I am getting the dig server located at this location, which just happens to be my own machine. So there you go, some basics right there. Now, let's go ahead and look something up. So I do dig google.com. Well, it says, okay, there is 292 seconds left in that record before it expires, and you have to re-get it, so it's cached for that long. It says the IP address is this address right here, and it says the name servers that are in, in charge of it that give it to me are these ns1 through ns4.google.com, and you can see the IP address is right here. So that's all kind of neat. All right. Now, what if I wanted to look up Gmail? Because oh, people like Gmail, right? Gmail. You can see, well, it's got a bunch of other names right here. Um, once again, this is the IP address. Um, 300 seconds until it expires, which is five minutes. And it says these are the authorities, and these are the servers that can give you information. And anyway, this is the IP address. All right. Now, if you wanted to send mail to Gmail, you could look up instead of a A record, which is minus T A, that's just the default, you can change it to an MX record. So MX is for mail exchange. And if I look at that, what does it tell me? Well, it says, okay, if you are going to send mail to Gmail, so you're looking for the MX record right there, you want to go to these servers. So it says the MX record a priority number, and then the name of the machine you connect to. Now, this is kind of interesting because one of the things that it also states in the documentation is you're only allowed to try connecting to the lowest, second lowest, and third lowest, I believe, priorities before anything else after that gets thrown away and you just don't try anymore. If you go to the this one right here or this one right here, you might actually be marked as a spammer because you're not following the protocol. Just be aware of that. All right, so this record right here, and you can now see, well, that right there. So we wanna figure out what is this IP address? So I could go ahead and do a dig type A, and I'll just paste in that address right there. So Gmail dash SMTP, in L google.com and it says okay well that one is this ip address right here okay so those are the a records and mx records well what are these ns records so these are the name server records they just indicate what servers you want to connect to if i want information and i want to ask specifically i can say well i want to ask this ns1.google.com this information all right, so I can do at, and then paste this right here, and it's going to ask that specific server, not this one right here. It'll ask Google directly and say, okay, what do you want? And Google will then respond and say, okay, this is ns1.google.com responding, and it's saying, oh yeah, this name right here comes to this IP address. All right. So you got that good. Uh, another thing you can look at is the SOA record. So let's go ahead and remove that. I might T. SOA is start of authority. Now this could be interesting because what it responds with is um, it says, okay, this is the name server. 
this is the email address to send it to. And you look, you look at that and say, wait, that's an email address. It actually is. It's just DNS dash admin and then change this first dot into an at sign google.com. So that's the email address of the DNS administrator. Then you've got these other numbers here. The most important one being this one right here, which is your serial number or your sequence number. It's kind of tells you what's going on. Most servers out there will actually have a date. So you'll see the first four will be a year, then a month, then a day, and then um, the last two will probably be some kind of a sequence number for that year. And it just increments every single, or that day. It just increments every single time they make a change. And so whenever they're doing zone transfers or synchronizing servers, they can look at the number and say, okay, is this one newer than what I have? And if it is, then I need to replace it. All right. Now that I have that figured out, we go back to looking at this uh, google.com thing or gmail.com. All right. So this IP address right here. What if I want to know what this IP address is? Well, I could do a dig minus X for a reverse lookup, and I can look up that thing right there. And it says, okay, it's actually this thing right here. C09S35 in F14 1E100, which actually is a, a Google .NET. And that's kind of neat. You can also see this thing right here. It has this address right here. It's the IP address in reverse order. So it's a 192, uh, 142, 251, 215, 238. And so it's kind of reverse order. Because you got to remember that the thing on the right hand side is the biggest thing. So net is obviously bigger than the. 1e100 and each thing is smaller so this is the biggest one arpa and then addresses and then this is the first octet second octet third octet and fourth octet so that's kind of interesting you can actually look it up that way if you wanted to say if i want to look up this one right here say well what is this one right here i could do dig minus T, PTR, so pointer, and then I do it in reverse order. So it would be 241.5.5.192. in adder arpa. And it responds as, oh, yeah, that that's the root server. We already knew that, but that's okay. So you can get that information there. Now, if I go back to doing a dig on uh, google.com, I can see, okay, this IP address. Now, well, how does that get its name? So I do a, um, or this google.com, how does it get its name? Where does it get it from? So if I do a dig, google.com plus trace, I can look starting from the root servers and see how it is designated all the way down. Then you can see, okay, when you want to get google.com, you start with the root servers, and these root servers say, okay, the next thing you look at is um, these servers right here. These ones probably take care of the top-level domains. All right, and then they forward you over to the Google servers, which then forward you to this information right here. I am in Oregon. Eugene, Oregon. And so if I wanted to look at the University of Oregon, I could do a dig uoregon.edu. And you can see it's this IP address. And you can see a bunch of information there. But how did it get it? So let's do a trace plus trace. And you look at it from the top and say, once again, you start with the root servers. The root servers say, oh, yeah, you want to go to the Educost servers, so the edu servers. The EDU servers say, well, these are the ones that you go to. And then they eventually give you this information right here. And so that's how you get it. So it kind of works its way down the system. Now, one thing that's interesting you'll notice is there is this f5cloudservices.com. 
and there's an lsu.edu, and then there's a couple of uoregon.edu servers. So what typically happens in educational institutions is educational institutions, such as the University of Oregon, will then pick other schools and ask them to work as backups in case their server goes down. Or maybe this f5cloudservices.com also works as a backup to store the information. But it goes more than just that. If we go back to our Google example, trace right there, I can say, well, what about this address again? I want to trace that one. So how do I do that? So I do a dig minus T P T R and you remember reverse order. So 78.33.251.142 in adder ARPA plus trace. So well, so it starts out and you can see at the top, it goes to the root servers once again. And then goes down to this in Adder ARPA the servers, and then it goes to Aaron. Aaron is the American Registry of Internet Numbers, so it has given out these numbers, and Google has worked with Aaron to rent numbers, probably pay something like five hundred dollars a year, or I don't know what it costs to keep the numbers, but it has those numbers, and then you can see down here. Aaron says, well, you talk to Google and Google will tell you, and then you look at it and that's great. All right, so one more set of uh, numbers to look at or things to look at. You can type in dig minus tmxgmail.com and you can see once again, the mail exchange record right there, but in order to make mail more secure, they also have another one, txt. And the txt records have this thing called the SPF right here. And so what it does is it says, okay, we know that if you want to send mail to gmail.com, use the MX record, but who is allowed to send mail from gmail.com? Well, it says, well, we want it to be the only people who can send mail from gmail.com are the ones who are underscore spf.google.com. Okay, so let's look at that one's record. So I'll do a dig minus t, txt, and then this area here, and it says, oh yeah, the only ones that are allowed to send it for this area here are these things we want. To include netblocks, google.com, netblocks2, google.com, netblocks3, and then nobody else. So all other ones were blocked. All right, so let's look at netblocks number one. Who is netblock number one? So dig minus t, txt, and let's see what our netblock, not number one is, but what that is. And you say, oh, it's these IP addresses. These IP addresses are allowed to send mail from gmail.com. And also, I think it was that, these ones can send it. And also, these ones right here can send it. So any one of those can send mail from gmail.com. All right. So we've looked at the uh, dig command. We've looked at the A records, MX records, NS records, SOA records the minus X for reverse lookup, the plus trace for sorry for servers are working down, and also the PTR records, and also the TXT records are here as well. So hopefully that will give you some more experience with DIG.